We're here to answer your game, gaming, and game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Well, the best place to send questions is through the website. That way they don't get lost. They get a nice notification, pops up on my phone. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. Today's question comes from the founding patron of the show, Brian Kirk. Are there any good word-based games out there besides Scrabble? In your opinion, is this even a category? Does it include word-guessing games like Taboo or Charades, or word-defining games like Balderdash? Well, thanks for the question, Brian, and for being with us right from the start. I think you'll be pleased to know that word games are a category, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to hobby board gaming, just as much as casual or mass market games. There are a ton of word games out there. There may not be as many as some of the other categories, and they're often, I'd say, overshadowed by the latest miniature game or some hot new deck builder or the latest Civ game, but there are plenty of great hobby word games out there. Plus, you mentioned three different categories. Sure, they're all word games to me. I don't care. I'll be loosey-goosey about this. It can be about spelling, or it could be about guessing words or word defining. They're all word games to me. That works. Uh, makes the category a little more broad. And I think there's hobby games covering all of those categories, as far as I'm concerned. To start, though, I do want to point out that there's nothing wrong with many of the mass market word games out there. Like, I'm personally a fan of many of them. So there's quite a few I don't like to play with Deanna, but that's just because she'll kick my butt because her vocabulary blows mine away. We've said previously in episodes that Upwards is the superior Scrabble in the mass market world, and I firmly stand by that. Yeah, we'll get to that when I start listing games. It's on there. Um, this is important to note, right? Just for the hobby in general, um, to kind of shoot down some gatekeeping and some elitism, in my opinion. Just because a game is, isn't sold in mass market stores, and it's from a famous game designer, and it features that game designer's name on the cover, and it's considered a hobby board game by all the real gamers, that doesn't actually mean it's a better game than anything you can find at Walmart or Target. Just because I can pick up a game at Walmart, Target, or even my closest shopper's drug mart here in Canada does not mean it's a bad game. Though we do need to point out that some mass market games don't always qualify under the definition of game, <laughs> as we've said about Candyland. Yeah, I, I'm also not saying that every mass market game <laughs> is good. No way, no way, no how, and not every hobby game is good. I'm just trying to say that the fact you can buy it at your local game store doesn't necessarily make it better than that game you can find at Target, and I think word games are a good example of that. So to that end, I want to start off with a list of decent mass market word games that I personally have no problem playing seeing out at game night, and I'm never going to look down on someone for playing. Up first is the one Brian mentioned, and he even said it himself in his question. He said, games other than Scrabble. And yes, Scrabble. Like, everyone knows this game. Not much to say about it. It's a classic. It still stands strong. It's not like the Monopoly that got passed down by the generations. Everyone's house ruled it, so it's a terrible game nowadays. Scrabble always was good, and I think it always will be good. Honestly, the worst part about Scrabble is the scoring. I've rarely seen a game where there haven't been questions or confusions and recalculations yeah. of the score along the way. Uh, that and Scrabble dictionaries. People memorizing yes. words that have never really been used <laughs> outside of Scrabble gets annoying. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, Scrabble, my dad was someone back in the day who did not play Scrabble with. He'd kick D's butt because he had every two-letter word in Scrabble memorized. And he would put down letters in the middle of this block of other letters and suddenly score 90-some points by putting a Q down. Like, it, I... Yeah, <laughs> the, the, that is definitely the issue with Scrabble. Yeah, and so that was Scrabble. All right, the one Sean already mentioned, Upwards. Uh, this was Deanna's favorite word game when I met her. Uh, besides not having any weird special scoring spots on the board, the big difference, of course, is that you can put letters on top of existing letters and build upwards. Uh, I've always enjoyed this one. Uh, it was my family's uh, preference to Scrabble once, once it came out. Uh, in part because of the easier scoring, yeah. but also just more flexibility in word creation using layering. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not as limited to being, you know, the person with the super vocabulary because you've got more flexibility in where words can go. And that's Upwards. Next, I got Boggle. Uh, of those three games, the, the, to me, those are the big three. 
This is my personal favorite. Shake up the little letter dice that rush the spell as many words as you can. Only score the words no one else has guessed. I have been a fan of Boggle forever. My favorite way to play it used to be on like the, the old um, Nintendo Game Boy. I've always dug it on handheld devices, but I'm up for playing it in person too. Yeah, this has always been a hugely popular game. Most houses and schools all have a copy. Honestly, I never played. <laughs> I think it might, I might have played some online versions or variations, but never the actual game of Boggle. Uh, there you go. That's what we own. So maybe when you come down, instead of playing the next heavy Euro, <laughs> we'll pull out Boggle. Set the you'll win. Yeah. I, 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 well, at least I won't. Between you two, you, you'd have a better chance than I do. All right. That was Boggle. All right, Quiddler. Uh, in this game, players are given a hand of letter cards. There are a lot of games like this, and you try to spell a word with it. And the thing is, you, you win the round if you're able to spell the word. If you can't, you have to discard a card and draw a new one. The neat bit here, and what I like about this game, is the fact that you start off with three cards, and you have to spell a three-letter word. Then you have four cards, you have to spell a four-letter card, five cards, and so on. Every round requiring a bigger and bigger word, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I do like the slow build of this one, where you're not expected to open with seven-letter convoluted words. Um, and that is Quiddler. Up next, one that's, uh, uh, I don't know, what gimmicky is probably the best word to word, way to word it, but a lot of fun, and that's Tapple. I gotta thank local gamer uh, John Salila for introducing me to this one. It's not one I would have ever picked up. It's this big Frisbee-looking thing with, like, a big right red buzzer in the middle, uh, light in the middle with all these letters around the edge. And it's not all the letters of the alphabet. Like, there's no Q. Like, they're trying to make it a little easier on you. There's no X, no Z. Uh, you pick a category from cards, which when we played, we didn't use the cards. We just picked a category. And then you pass the thing to the first player, and they have to say a word that matches the category and press the letter. Then they pass the machine to the next player, who has to say another word using a different letter. Now, at the same time, the thing has a countdown. If you don't pick a quick letter quick enough, the buzzer goes off, and you're out of the game. And you just keep playing until it's one person left. This is similar to those games in school where you need to say a thing, often it was a state or a province, that starts with the last letter of the previous person's word. Um, and But it's got an electronic component and some theming. Uh, note, there is also a Tapple 10, which is a yeah, different game. Different. Uh, it does contain some of some of the same games, but it's uh, 10 different games uh, yeah, no electronic by the same manufacturer. Either. No, there's no electronic one. Um, but that is Tapple. Uh, and next, we have some harder-to-find games. Some mass market stores will have these. Others may not. But I think they're common enough that you shouldn't need to find an FLGS to find them. You can also find these at teacher supply st stores and educational stores. All right, this one looks really cool. I will admit I've never played this one. I've seen it out at, at, at events before, and it's got some neat elements, and that's Word on the Street. Now, this is a unique one where the letters are placed on a board representing a street, and they all start in the median. And then teams try to say words that match a keyword. And when they say a word, they get to move up all the letters in the word toward their side of the street. And if you can get the letters to go off the edge of the street, they get points for those. So they count all their tiles that came off their side of the street versus the other teams, how many letters came off their side. A very neat little quick game with, like, I just like that kind of push and pull tug of war. Like especially popular letters like R, S, E, L, N, E are probably going to get pulled back and forth quite a bit. So you're going to want to try to use a word that uses multiples of those letters to pull them all the way to your side. Some neat actual strategy to this game instead of just guessing words. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, this one, similar to the la uh, last one, not all the letters are there on the street either. Yeah. So uh, you want to go for words like uh, the description, the example they used is pineapple because you've got a, but you can move that P like three times. Yeah. Um, it's also available in junior and there is an expansion to refresh the cards. If you've cool. gotten through and gotten bored of the original one. And that is Word on the Street. Next, I have Kerfuddle. Uh, this is another one I haven't played, so I probably should have put that caveat at the beginning. I'm not a huge word game gamer, so some of these are definitely games I played and loved, but a lot of them are ones that came strongly recommended or just sound neat to me. Uh, this one I actually know because of Jeff Seuss's wedding we attended at Reno's Kitchen. Sad to see that place close. This game was out on the table. Like, there was Go Cuckoo, there was Scrabble, there was a bunch of games people already know. Uh, what are the other really popular ones? Is that Dice Game, and I'm forgetting the name of it, but it doesn't matter. This Kerfuddle game, a group grabbed it at the beginning of the night, and, like, they just kept playing and recruiting more people. And every time I walked into the into the 
the bar area of of the wedding, there were people playing kerfuddle. Now, I don't really know it, but it sounds like an advanced version of Boggle. So it doesn't have a grid, but you pull out the dice. And then there's cards that are played each round to change the rules. Like, I know at least one of the cards is the word has to be X long. Sounded pretty neat. And man, was it popular at least that one night. Yeah, so this one strikes me as much more interesting than bo than Boggle. Uh, but I think it's actually, I think there's actually a separate dice that uh, roll, you roll to determine the minimum one, the number of, number. of okay. letters in a word. Uh, and then the cards are some sort of theming, uh, you know, limitation, again, limitation. Yeah. So you, you, you roll, you know, 14 dice or something for letters, one for how many your minimum count is, and then the cards are some sort of limitation on it. All. Yeah, so you're not just spelling every word you possibly can. Exactly. And this is, that was Kerfuddle. All right, up next, Bananagrams. Uh, we mentioned this one on the show before. This is one we own, we dig. Uh, tiles are spilled out to the table, split amongst the players. You then use them to basically make a crossword style, like Scrabble style, where you got your across and down, spelling words. It's similar to Scrabble, but with none of the pain of figuring out scoring. Instead, it's a race to use up all your tiles before your opponent does. Uh, that's the basic game. There are a bunch of variant ways to play uh, in the in the banana that you get to buy this game. And there's a ton of variants for Bananagrams also found online. I'm a, just a huge fan of word games without complex scoring. Yeah. Don't make me hard pivot between literary and numerical sides of my brain. <laughs> uh, instead, just play competitive crosswords with Bananagrams. Now... On to more in line with the, uh, those more in line with hobby word games. Yeah, so these are the ones you're probably going to have to go to your local game store to pick up. A lot of them are by designers who have designed other games and have tried their hands at word games. Uh, the first being Pictomania from Vlada Chivato. Uh, this is a gamer's version of Pictionary. Again, by saying it's a gamer's version, I'm not saying it's better. It's a different alternative. It's more complicated. There's more strategy and tactics required. Because in this case, Instead of one person drawing and everyone trying to guess, everyone is drawing at once. And while drawing, the players also have to bet on what their opponents are drawing. And the way this works is that there are a limited set of words each round. So if you are playing with five players, you only put six words out. So you know one word, no one's drawing. You know the word you're drawing. So you can actually do things like deduction. Like, well, he obviously has a duck. I obviously have a ball. So that means Mike either has a car or this. And the fact he's drawn a bump means he's probably got a car. Like, you can kind of see how your brain works while playing this game. There are actual tactics, too. Like, when you're drawing, you don't want to make your thing too subtle, but you want to make it subtle enough that people guess it or else you lose points. And like I say, it's, it's Gamer's Pictionary. If you want Pictionary with a little bit more explanation, a little bit more difficulty, but also rewarding skill over just drawing ability, check this one out. Now, I suppose we're probably going to get arguments from some people debating what is and isn't a word game. And I think yeah. that's a fair discussion to have, honestly. But it's our show, so we pick the games to start anyways. And that was Pictomania. Yeah, there was a, Brian had, I can't remember what, he mentioned one in his list. He was like, game, word guessing games, and I threw yeah. it in there with those ones. So yeah. I went with this as a word guessing game. Because yeah, they're absolutely. all like one word clues that you're trying to draw. Yep. And plus, like I said, there's not that many word games. we got to be able to get it in here somehow. Up next, a game I talked about last week, week before, I don't remember now, two weeks ago, and that's Nitwit. Um, I'm always going to call it this because that's what it is. It's the Venn Diagram word game. Players are going to put out a bunch of spools, note the theme. Uh, those are then looped with various colored threads, and attached to each thread is a single word. Then it's up to the players to look at the spool and come up with a word or sentence for each one that applies to every thread surrounding it. So one spool might be under three threads, another one might be under eight and you're trying to find a word or sentence that applies to all of those. This is one of my favorite word games. It's it's such a word guess, word uh, discovery games, like where you're not spelling things, but you're actually trying to find the word. I am a huge fan of it. You can get it cheap. I don't know why it's so cheap everywhere, but it's cheap everywhere. I, I strongly recommend almost everyone pick up a copy of Nitwit. My only thing is to make sure you have a conversation before the game starts about what kind of answers you're going to allow because we found this game can go adult quick and you may not want that in your game night yep uh, i still think of it as the detective's beginner's kit for those yarn things they do on tv <laughs> yeah, similar in a way <laughs> but uh that was nitwit all right up next hardback uh this is a deck building game where players are trying to build their deck to create words that score points it's a re-implementation of the game paperback and a lot of people loved paperback 
I personally prefer this one because what it does is it adds in book genres, four of them to the mix. And certain letters are going to be tied to certain book types. So uh, there's romance, thriller, I don't remember the other two. It doesn't really matter. But what matters is that if you play one card from the romance set, it matters nothing. But by the time you play a second card to the romance set, now the romance power goes up. This is going to be recognizable to anyone who plays Star Realm. It's that same mechanic in deck building. Clank has this as well. There's other games out there that have that. Where if you play cards from the same set, you get bonuses. Uh, it's a fantastic game. The only problem I find with it is the fact that you can spell the same word over and over. Some people don't like that. Now, personally, that's actually, to me, it's part of the game because it's a deck builder. And if you can build your deck and thin it so you can spell the same fantastic word multiple times, you're playing the game right. But for people who want to be rewarded for their vocabulary, they're probably not going to enjoy hardback as much as another word game. What that means for me is I can happily play it with Deanna and still win. <laughs> All right. Well, that they actually call it a prequel to paperback because they take it back to the 19th century yeah. for the theme. But don't be, mis be, be mistaken. It is indeed a re-implementation. Yeah, uh, of it's, a, it's basically the same game. It yeah. just it, it uses that that additional mechanics and new ways to score. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that is hardback. Up next, I got Train of Thought. So now we're into word guessing again. Players try to get the other players to guess a word with going, giving only a three-word clue. But one of those words had to come from a prior answer. So the way that works is for each clue, each player can make one guess. If no one gets it right, the clue giver then comes up with another clue, but they have to use one of those other players' guesses and up to two other words. You get this whole train of using the last thing from the last thing into the new one. Yeah, I really like how this one forces you to think on your feet and make use of what has come before you to be successful. Yep. And that is Train of Thought. Up next, code names. We've talked about this enough. This is one I, I kind of thought was a stretch, but you know what? It showed up on a lot of word games lists when I was trying to do research for this post or for this uh, topic. Uh, this is a game, team game with a grid of cards. Players are trying to get their team to select all the cards that are on their team side while avoiding an assassin which sounds really weird, but it's pretty simple once you see it. Clues are given as one word or a short sentence and the number of cards on the field that apply. So if you wanted to pay, you could be like Spider-Man 3, and you're looking for Web, Hero, and New York could be the three cards that are tied together. This is honestly one of the best modern word-based party games out there, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I really, uh, this one is one of the best parts of this is how you can expand the player count through teams. So if you've got the big group, um, Codenames is fantastic for just teaming up people. And even if it says, I think it's six players or whatever. Yeah, is, or uh, whatever it's the says limit, the you can do it with, you know, groups. And, you know, each player is a team of people. Yep. Um, really easy for people to get excited playing Codenames. Next, I got Letter Tycoon. Uh, this is another card-driven game where you're getting cards that represent individual letters. Uh, but it's combined with stock-based economics. So someone took 18xx and mashed it with Scrabble. It's pretty neat. Players score points and stocks for forming words, but then they can use the money they've earned to patent one of the letters in the word they used. And then in the future, if any other players use that letter, the patent owner earns money. So it's pretty neat. It's all about who has the most money at the end of the game. Uh, this is probably the most gamey word game i've ever played i gotta admit i love it it's like the heavy word game if the, if there is such a thing i'm still i'm sure it's still like a two point something because it's not heavy but for word games there's actual economics in there and some of the cards have special powers and there's a lot going on in this game i would own a copy of this game if i could find it for a reasonable price yeah i'm actually quite interested in this one as it combines some fun word game themes that i've played on apps but then introduces some interesting real gaming elements to make uh uh to make it now i do see that uh two player is not yeah, the ideal no. way to play this though so keep that in mind uh, if you're if two is your normal uh, player count before you grab yeah, it's, it's one of those right two. like if you're going to patent a letter you're just punishing the other player where if there's three or four players it's going to spread it around right it's not just yeah. i win plus if i get a bunch of patents out before you do that kind of is gonna yeah. swing it to one side yeah i would not play that one two player we played with more than that again that was letter tycoon all right, just one. Uh, this is the new hotness is when it comes to word games. This is huge. It's blowing up everywhere. Uh, it's not one I personally had a chance to play, but it is on my wish list. 
in this game, all but one player knows the goal word. Everyone else has to take that word and write down a clue to try to get the main player, the, the guesser, to guess it. The thing is, before you do that, the clues are compared and any duplicate clues are removed. The player then has to try to guess the word with the clues that are left. This one sounds like a great party game. Great big group game. Yeah, no. Interestingly, this is a re-release with improved components of a previously smaller release French-only game huh. known as We Are the Word. Uh, but the rights were purchased and they upgraded the pieces and uh, released it as just one. Yeah, this one, it, it looks good. It's, it's one I really want to try. Another new hotness. This I just came out 2019. It's called Letter Jam. Now, it's another one I personally haven't tried, but I want to include it just because it's something very different. What's different about this is it's cooperative. It's the only co-op game on the list. As far as I can think, it's the only co-op word game I think I've ever even seen. At least that was noteworthy enough to, to be on a, a, a to, to be ranked, right? That wasn't terrible. So players are working together to try to form meaningful words from the cards around the table. The thing is, this uses the Hanabi mechanic, where you can't actually see the letter card you're holding. So what happens is players in turn say how long a word they can spell with what's out there, and then they give people tokens to show what place they are in the word, but they never actually say the word. And then the way to actually score is you have to guess which letter you're holding. Uh, that's obviously not the full rules. I got to say, this sounds fascinating. Like, I, I really want to try this one. This one is doing very well on Board Game Geek, and interestingly, strongly recommended as best at five to six players. Um, as a fan of Hanabi, I can certainly see the uh, fun in this one. Again, this is Letter Jam. All right, where are words? Everyone loves this game. Everyone knows how I feel about Werewolf Mafia. I really should give in probably at QCC and let Sean Gilgore teach me to play, see if I do like it better than Werewolf. I personally have stayed away from this because I am not a fan of Werewolf Mafia, that con game that everyone loves. Uh, this is a word version. And I got to admit, the way it's described, it doesn't sound bad. So players are trying to guess a secret word by answering yes and no questions. You have to try to figure out the word before time runs out. The thing is, one of the players is secretly a werewolf who's working against you and knows the word, so can try to steer the group away from it. The neat part here is, even if you don't guess the word by the time the timer runs out, if you can guess who the werewolf is, you then win. It's quick. It's well-regarded, even enough for a nominee, as a nominee for a Spiel du Jour. I suggest looking at the deluxe version which plays up to yeah. 20 players and has a number of new features and roles within the game. Personally, I'm wary of anything werewolf and not even just the werewolf game con game, but I, I'm just not a fan of most games that have werewolf theme of any kind, but that's just me. For everyone else, check out Werewords. I don't know, with 20 players, that sounds worse because now there's going to be 20 different roles and it's now it's going to become even more where players are eliminated. I think I would try this with just like five or six myself but hey that was where words next another words game trap words uh this is my final game for today this is the final word game that seems to be worth picking up uh this is a team-based game and i included it on the list because brian specifically mentioned taboo this is the next step of taboo this is the gamers taboo just like pictomania is the gamers uh pictionary this is the gamers taboo the big twist here is instead of everyone knowing what word you're not allowed to use, it's the opposing team that picks the word you can't use, and you don't know what it is. So you have no idea which words are traps in this game. Now, the other thing that seemed cool about this one is it adds a theme to the game, and I gotta say this part sounds neat, because you take on the role of a group of adventurers crawling through a fantasy dungeon full of traps and curses with a boss waiting for you at the end. So I don't know how that's tied in, but throw it in a dungeon theme, I gotta say that hits some of my buttons. So, I uh, a special note because I know uh, Ryan, I believe, is uh, yep. has always been a problem with this. Notepad, pencils, and even a pencil sharpener nice. are included with this game. Now, on the <laughs> downside, for my money, uh, I looked into this quite a bit once today because I I thought the same as you. Oh, look, dungeon theme. This looks cool. So I read into it quite a bit, and it seems like they've really overthought this one. Okay. They've got a strong concept with the with the game idea. And then they've just attached a whole bunch of other stuff onto it to make it more appealing to gamers, like, you know, visually appealing to gamers and things. Okay. Uh, and the dungeon aspect 
ends up being extraneous and takes away from what is a really great take on the old game of Taboo. All right. Um, also note, this is entirely different from another Trap Words game from 1997. Yeah, this, there is, are this two is a trap 2019. Words. Yeah, there are two Trap Words games. You probably won't find the one from 1997, but, not, you know, but you never it, know. Is the, it is there on Board Game Geek. I do wonder if you can throw out the theme, if it interferes, if you can just play the word game. I, I suspect you probably could. It might, you know, it, a little... It's reviewing pretty well. Like, its rating's pretty good, so I have to assume there's something good there. Yeah, well, again... Again, I do apologize for not being a word game expert. <laughs> um, there are quite a few of these I played, but there are quite a few I haven't, so I'm going off what other people have said. Yeah, I, I just started digging into the reviews and looking at and looking at ratings and rankings and what people were saying about it. And again, the game concept itself, the word game portion of this, is really well done. Yeah, sounds good. It's just this little dungeon extra and the the cutesy, cartoony kids kids art and things that detract from that. So. Now, if I had to go shopping right now, the ones I would most want to pick up, and this will include, like, say, I had none, Letter Tycoon. Just I really want a copy of that. Code names for party games, I think you have to have. I personally love Hardback and Nitwit. Pictomania, I loved, but I had a real hard time getting it to the table, I will admit. Uh, and convincing people to play it, because they see it, and they're just like, oh, it's Pictionary, I don't want to play Pictionary. Oh, I can't draw. And I'm like, it's actually less important, but I have a real hard time selling that one. I gotta admit, I want to try Kerfuddle. Word of the Street's really great. Tapple, I almost wish someone locally just had a copy to bring out now and then, but I don't feel the need to own it. As for the classics, I think most people already own them at this point. Yeah, Letter Tycoon, I think, is the one that I would most like That's to the give one a try I most to. would love to, to have um, a copy of and give dive into a little deeper. But I, I'd be willing to I'd be willing to try the uh, word on the street up against you. So you know. <laughs> All right, words with the same letters in them. That's a that's a unique way of having to think. Yep. Yep. All right, if you've got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or email us at questions at tabletopbellhop.com. This is what we're here for, this segment of the show. We are here to answer your gaming and game night questions. We got plenty on the webpage, but we can always use more. We want to be here answering your questions. Now that we're done with our thoughts on the main topic, let's head over to the lobby and see what they think. Uh... I did not see a lot of recommendations from the chat. I was hoping someone would point out some word games we missed. A lot of lo love for upwards. I did notice that going yep. through. Uh, a lot of love for upwards. Wordsy, yeah, I what? remember. Ryan is Danica mentioning probably Wordsy. Clarify. Wordsy, I've heard the name. I don't know the game, though. Dana could correct me on this. I thought we had played upwards and went, wow, this is not as good as I remember. But that's all I remember is sitting down to play it at some point and her going, ooh, okay. My memory of this was way better. So Wordsy is a re-implementation of Prolix. Ooh, uh, I don't know that much there. And yeah, Wordsy is a 2017. Uh, again, you know, there are, most Word games are about a 20, 10 to 20 minute game, yeah, generally speaking. most of them are. Um, oh, that's from Gilhova. Gilhova yeah. makes some good games. Yep. Yeah. So it's uh, timed, and uh, you get eight consonants on the board, and you have to the first person to write down a word flips a thirty second timer, and huh. everyone else gets thirty seconds to write down their own word. Possibly, it's interesting. Yeah. So uh, May Suggins points out you had to play Werewolf as a team building exercise at work. I don't think I could play it without having flashbacks to working customer service. So that's how I feel about were were Werewolf, but I didn't even have to go through that. <laughs> like, I just get flashbacks of playing Werewolf and getting eliminated for no reason whatsoever because I had a striped shirt on, if I remember correctly, was the reason that the villagers gave for killing me because that's I'm not a fan. I do want to try. I, I, I've got to give were, were, were Words a try at some point. There's enough people I respect that like it. Just, ah, uh, I don't know. Prove me wrong. That's That's what I need to know. Ryan mentions that Dr. Michael Heron of Meeple Like Us thinks of Scrabble as an area control game. And yeah, which it is. to be honest, that's it. It's all yeah, about absolutely. the scoring. It's all yeah. about the three times. It's not where words you spilled. It's who can get to a three times scoring first and put the yeah. right thing on it. Yeah. It, it, it. There's you still have to have the vocabulary, though. Like yeah. I said, I, I, it's a it's that. But then you add in the three and the two letter words that score ridiculous points when you hit multiple areas. And, and but again, that, a lot of that's not vocabulary. 
I wouldn't describe that as that's vocabulary. Not okay, okay, memorizing. I mean, that's, yeah, wordless. that's the thing. Yeah. It's wordless because there's just so so many useless words there. Uh, I know yeah, like, earlier, how? earlier. How, why the are they there? Room, why are there all these two letter words that aren't real words even may, in the Scrabble dictionary? Uh, may and uh, D were mentioning that their house rule was it wasn't just enough for it to be in the dictionary. You had yeah. to use it in a sentence. Well, yeah, uh, it makes sense. Because that, that was cool. the problem with the, and it was the Scrabble dictionary, not the normal dictionary. These things aren't in the, you know, Merriam-Webster dictionary. Yeah, I don't even know where they come from. Well, but again, I mean, there's all sorts to... of strange words that aren't in common dictionaries that technically are words in some, you know, yeah, some form or another. But you know, only if you've got the unabridged OED is are you ever going to find it otherwise? But like, okay, A A. A B A D A E A G A H A I A L A M A N A R A S. Okay, A S is as. That's <laughs> A N N. There we go. Oh, you know, A N S A. Like, what do those mean? What What's F A? What's What's Fa? Ah. <laughs> like, what What is that? Like, B five O from Z A. Is that like short for pizza? <laughs> X U. Like, that's got to be a big one. If you can memorize it, you can use X U in Scrabble. Like, those are two big letters. Yep, that's a big score. Like there's there's a hundred and seven acceptable two letter words in Scrabble, and I'm willing like to bet you how? can't use more than about a dozen of them in a sentence. Uh, if that, <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't get it. Yeah. And then there there's two different. I guess there's two different known Scrabble dictionaries. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. You know, there's competing Scrabble dictionaries, and there's you know there, like there's it's, it's CSW version, which actually has more. So the minimum is 107, and then the more relaxed version, there's 127 two-letter words. Right. Like, that's... I'm sorry. If you got 107, that's pretty relaxed already as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, play some word games. Absolutely. I dig them. It's not something I play often. Like I said, I lose at games where it's vocabulary-based. Well, at least versus Deanna. Versus other people, I have a pretty good vocabulary. My problem is my spelling sucks which I, Sean is yes, well aware of <laughs> see my show notes. So my, I am, I'm really bad for spelling. So and I have that problem with word games where I put the word down, but I've spelled it wrong or I don't realize how it's spelled. So that that's yeah. part of the problem. Yeah. Autocorrect doesn't exist in Scrabble. No, <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> in Boggle, if you get word recommendations, that would be terrible. Word, word domination. domination. If that's a game, it's not one I know. There are all kinds of card games like that, that just don't rate that well or whatever that are, you know, play the cards to spell the words. None of them literally look that cool. Though. The word domination is over a seven. It's actually a weight of two with a 7.1 ranking. 7.1 rating. Not what I know. Not world I building see. meets area control in word that domination. That sounds cool. Play of one, as one of eight diabolical supervillains competing to steal <laughs> the world's priceless artifact before your opponents have a chance. In word domination, you will ransack, backstab, and steal your way to victory. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. And this time, I can't really be yelled at for not mentioning themes first, because 90% of the games I mentioned tonight don't have any themes. So. Yeah. I mean, word on the street, I suppose, has a theme. You know, it's it's the, the it's, whole there's a street, street theme. There's a street. <laughs> you're crossing the street, too. Yeah, I, I, you are crossing I the street. That's what you're trying to do, basically, is the words are stuck in the media and you're trying to pull them. Except, unfortunately, uh, they're all jaywalking, so... Yes. <laughs> Words Be Free Trent, I've heard, is all right. Um, there's a whole bunch of party games that I was trying to decide if they fit or not, right? Like, not with some wagers. I'm trying to think. These games where you get a white erase board, you have to write stuff down. Oh, here's a shout-out. I'm going to give a shout-out to some tabletop people have talked about these. I don't know if they count as tabletop. To me, they count as video games, but they're very much tabletop video games. And that is the Jackbox Party Pack. The Jackbox Party Pack, any of them, I don't know which one I own on the PlayStation, has a phenomenal selection of drawing, word-guessing games, spelling games, shout-out-the-answer games. Well, no, write-out-the-answer games. <laughs> like, to be honest, for most of these games, we've done this on New Year's. We get everyone together because you can log in with your phone, and I put on the Jackbox Party Pack, and suddenly 20 of us are playing a word game together yep. where it's all stuff like pick a letter or yes or no answers but there are a ton of great word games um word between friends isn't that just the uh knock off the scrabble words with friends yeah well, that's words with friends that's words i don't know with friends. i don't know what word, word between friends. but yeah check out the jackbox party pack if you like word games like just look at the various games that come in them like i think the one i have has three different variations on word games 
Yeah, Words with Friends is what Ryan. Yeah, Words with Friends. Yeah, yeah so they probably they probably board game the the video game because that was the app. It, it that is was bought it's, by Zeninga. It's still, it's still Scrabble. I don't quite get how it's any different. Like the scoring tiles are even in the same place. Last time I looked at it. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, no, it's Scrabble. Yeah, That's it's really bizarre. I, I'm not quite sure how the license. I think Scrabble must be out of copyright. For the first time ever, you can play Words with Friends in person with your favorite yes. wordies. Unless AKA you had a you Scrabble, played Scrabble board. Game. Yes. That's weird. Unspeakable words of Cthulhu card game is terrible, in my opinion. That's why that's not on the list. I own that game. Uh, besides the fact the miniatures started releasing mold released five years after owning it and turned kind of goopy, which is very Cthulhu-like. Uh, the problem with that game was is the scoring was based on the number of angles in the letters. So an A scored three because it had three points, and like a Z scored two because it had two points, and it had nothing to do with how common or uncommon the letter was, which I thought was kind of neat. Plus, in that game, you could literally throw down all your words and make up a make made up word because that was part of the game. But then you had to roll the sanity die. And if you rolled less than the number of letters you spent, you lost your little Cthulhu tokens. And if you lose all your Cthulhu tokens, you, you, you're you insane and you're out of the game. And it, it just, it was, it, I don't know, it was silly push your luck more than an actual word game. And I found the players who actually tried to spell stuff tended to do worse than the people that were just like, bluff, bluff, bluff. yay, I rolled 22, so I'm fine. Like, it, I don't know. It's it's like many C. Jackson games. They're, they're silly, lighter party games where you're meant to laugh and have a good time and laugh at someone saying, bluff, 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 than actually enjoy playing them. We did sell the game. It was, it was despite the fact it had rotting miniatures in it, someone bought it because I we looked it up. The stuff was safe. Yeah, people dig it. I don't. Uh, the people who like Munchkin tend to like that. People who like Steve Jackson style games, you know, Zombie Dice, the quick filler games, are probably going to like Unspeakable Words. Not one for me, though. So Words with Friends is not quite Scrabble. They shifted some place, some things around and then cut out a bunch of the ru rules from Scrabble, uh, which are okay. apparently, you know, important rules for Scrabble that they just decided they, they didn't tried know. to make it simpler or so. something. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Whatever the case may be. All right, let's get going. All right, well, we'll be back checking the lobby again during this show, more than likely.